Hi guys, it's Kelly here and I'm back with another video. Today's video is featuring some products from Hero Arts. I am using the Forest and Mountain Looking Glass Dyes, the Circle and um, Rectangle Frame Looking Glass Dyes, and then the Brick Wall Stencil, and my sentiments are from the Seaside Highway Heroscape. So I wanted to, I don't know if you're familiar with these looking glass dies, but you can either layer them on top of each other to create um, kind of like a three die scene, or you can use them separately. And I've done a combination of the two, um, but I thought that they would look best on a slimline card. So that's what I have here. It's three and three quarters by eight and a half. Obviously my stencil is not a slimline stencil, but that's okay, we're going to make it so, <laughs> because that's how we roll. So I thought that these little windows, I guess is how I pictured them, would look pretty cool on this kind of textured background. So I have my stencil in place here, and as you can see, I did end up taping down my um, card base. Well, I taped it up, I guess, actually, because it's up to mat to stick to the stencil. Um, but that's just to hold it in place. I am starting with the Granite um, Hero Arts ink, and I am using an extra large blending brush. This just happens to be, I have all the sizes, um, but this just happens to be the one that I have for these colors. And you'll notice when I'm putting the ink down, I'm not being real particular about where it goes, and I'm also leaving about a quarter to a half inch gap on the right hand side and then I'm going to go in with the charcoal which is a little bit of a darker gray. If you want a warmer gray you could use wet cement that would be a good option as well but I like the cooler grays it just tends to be what I lean more towards um, and again I'm just putting this down randomly leaving that gap on the right hand side and you'll see when I remove this that the bricks kind of fade off to the right um, which really is kind of a cool look in and of itself but that fade is going to give me the opportunity to just flip my stencil around. Now obviously the stencil is the similar but different and so there's, these aren't going to match up perfectly and I know that but I don't need it to. Um, because the bricks in this stencil are kind of a little bit wonky, like they're not perfectly symmetrical, um, I don't need them to line up perfectly. They will be just fine. So I'm doing the ink blending in the same exact way, um, and I am leaving a little bit of a gap, like I said, about a quarter of an inch to a half an inch on the left-hand side. This time around is on the left-hand side, um, to where they meet. So I need that to be lighter where they're meeting so that you don't notice that it doesn't line up perfectly. Um, and we're going to be doing some die cutting and stuff through this, but ultimately you'll see here in a second when I take the stencil off, I don't even think it's really that noticeable. Even if I wasn't doing the texture, I think I could probably get away with this background being ink blended and nobody would know that I didn't use a slimline stencil. Like to me, it's not obvious. You let me know what you think. As far as getting my spacing correct, because I knew I wanted to use the frames um, to go around it to make them look like, my idea was windows, but I guess they could also be picture frames. I am just getting an idea of like the spacing I need to use for my actual um, windows to make sure everything is going to fit on there nicely. I know that I am going to have to put the frames up against each side of the card uh, and that's fine because it'll give me the same gap in between each of the frames. They'll just be butted up right against the edge of the card. Here, what you see me doing, and you might think, Kelly, you're a little bit crazy. Why are you doing that? Um, I am doing this, so I'm using uh, whichever one I want to be in the foreground. So for the middle, and the right hand side it's going to be this little die here what i'm doing there is marking where the dies are going to sit and originally i had just used this um, regular clear ruler but you'll see here in a second that i'm going to switch over to a t-square ruler just so i can make sure that it's straight um, and what i'm doing is i'm using that little tick mark that i made with the dies to draw a line straight across this and that's just going to let me know where I need to line up my dies so that they will all be straight across and then I'll just erase this later. 
So here, like I said, I'm picking the two, um, whichever part of the picture you want to be in the foreground is the one that you want to cut through the base. Um, you could go in there and do this yourself um, to remove them, but I just found this to be easier. So this same tree is on the right and in the middle because in the middle I'm going to use all three layers. And then I am also going to, um, <clears throat> sorry, lose my voice. Um, I'm also going to cut out these layers individually from other pieces of cardstock so that I can kind of layer them up. The reason that they don't cut out the entirety of the square around them is so you can use them for like trifold cards and things like that. Something to note here is I wanted to cut the mountain without cutting the stream. And so what I did is when I put it through my die cutting machine, I put the um, plate above the stream. And so in one of those cases, I got it pretty perfect and I was able to keep my mountain intact. In another one of those cases, I came down just a little bit too far and I ended up cutting the top part of my stream. But ultimately when I assembled it, you can't see it because of the sentiments. So I wasn't worried about it. Now, moving on to the further texturing of this background, now that I have all my pieces parts cut out, you saw me erase those pencil lines just to make sure they don't get trapped underneath my hero paste. I am putting my stencil back in place and just securing that again with some low tack tape. And then the hero paste that I chose to use is the uh, white. And the reason that I chose to use the white, there's a couple of, of different options. There's a sparkle, there's, um, I think there's gold. Is there gold at this point? I think there is. Um, but I chose to go with the white because my gray uh, ink blending will then act as a shadow. Here, again, I am not completely covering everything. I'm kind of putting it down haphazardly. It's going through a lot of the stencils just part way, and that's totally fine. I am just looking to add a little bit of texture and make my brick wall look a little bit more realistic. Um, I obviously used mine to put like frame pictures on, but you could certainly do a scene card with this. You could um, do like a really pretty floral in front of this. Um, so a lot of options for this type of background. You can also let this portion of the paste dry before you move your stencil over. I didn't. Um, here what you see me doing is because I know I'm going to have to adhere my trees to the parts that are kind of um, hanging over. I wanted to make sure I didn't have any issues with anything adhering to it. And so I'm just wiping off the texture paste from the little snow portions. Anyway, back to what I was saying is you can totally let these dry in between. I didn't. Um, it didn't bother me to have a little bit more texture in my brick. Um by kind of like if my stencil touched it or moved it. I, I wasn't looking for perfection and because of that I didn't stress about just moving it right over. This stuff does dry relatively quickly so I think I actually only had one or two spots where my stencil kind of stuck to it and in those cases again it just added more texture not anything that I was super concerned about. But if you are, you can certainly wait for your left hand side to dry and then go in and do your right hand side, whatever works for you. And then once this portion is done, um, you'll be able to see, like obviously my glass mat's a little bit of a mess, but that's okay, it cleans up really easy. Um, but when I pick it up here, you'll be able to see how portions of the brick are raised and it has a ton of dimension because of the paste and then also the ink blending that we did, adding in some shadows. For these looking glass dies, I am going to color them with my markers but I really only did two color blends. I didn't spend a lot of time trying to blend it um, because like the dyes are so well done, it really didn't need me to do a whole lot else to it. So I used the same blue for the stream as the sky um, and then the mountains and the snow are all in the same colors and all the pine trees were colored the same as well. So. Where did we leave off in story time last time? I think the last the last conversation that we had, uh, just in case you missed it, I'll do a quick recap to catch you up. 
Um, so Eric and I had both had strep and Caitlin had come down with a little bit of something. I had called her doctor and they said they didn't, you know, it sounded like she just had a regular cold, but if we wanted to be sure, we were sure she didn't have strep, we'd have to bring her in in the middle of this blizzard that hit um, us and pretty much everybody else. So we decided that we're going to take her in out of overabundance of caution because my mother-in-law is immune compromised. That's where we're at. So at this point, Eric and I discussed that we are going to take her in. It's determined that he is going to take her because I don't do well in snow. Like I will drive in snow if I have to, but I have a lot of driving anxiety in general and the snow just makes it worse. Put my kid in the car with me and my anxiety is basically in the stratosphere. <laughs> so um, Eric's like, I'll just take her, get her tested because all they're going to do is like swab her little nose and then, you know, tell us, yes, she has it or no, she doesn't. Um, so I'm going to stay home with Peanut, with our older child. So Eric goes outside to preheat the truck so that they can go and the truck is dead. The battery is dead because it's like negative 30 outside and we park our vehicles on the outside of our house. So the truck battery is dead. He's going to have to take my car, which can best be described as a luxury compact. I know that those seem like it should be oxymoron but I assure you it's not. It's a, it's a nice car that's little. That's how I would describe it. Um, and so he's going to have to take my car. So he preheats my car. He, we get her all bundled up, you know, in like coat, hat, all that jazz. I'm worried about the, um, wind getting her you know because it's like blizzarding he's only gonna have to walk a short period of time through the parking lot with her you know and obviously like her out the door into our car but it was very very windy very very cold so he is like there's like this mound of snow behind your car i think i can make it through it should be okay um because now at this point now we're like really pushing the limit to get there um, in the allotted time of the appointment that we have. So he goes outside, takes her, kiss him goodbye, whatever, gets her tucked in. Um, and then they're off. So I am like doing something in the kitchen. I come around the corner to go upstairs and I realize they are not in fact off. They're stuck in the driveway in my luxury compact. <laughs> So he is like out of the car trying to dig out the wheels to get some sort of traction. So me and my, <laughs> me and my robe, um, wait, we have to go back to the car. So here I should not have done this. I adhered the mountain portion down first. Um, and really I should not have adhered the stream part because that is such a thin portion. It can be kind of wiggly and it wiggled on me, which meant when I went to go put in my second piece um, of the mountain that also connected to the stream, it did not fit correctly. The stream had moved. Um, and so I needed, I actually ended up having to use my tweezers to kind of pull it up, then fit this little piece in here and then put my stream back down where it went. Um, this is one of those things that just sometimes happens with dyes because you have like those thin intricate pieces. Sometimes they can, you know, wiggle into a different shape than how they're originally die cut. And it just, it just happens sometimes. Next time I will know better to not just straight glue that down <laughs> um, but to wait on that portion until I have this portion glued in. Um, so anyway, so me and my robe, I put on my garage boots that are tall with the Sherpa on top. I throw a coat on over that that has a hood but I can't find any sort of gloves and like I 
go outside. By this point, by the time I get outside, Eric has gotten the regular snow shovel. And I'm like, where is Nathan's shovel? Which is a child size shovel, just to be clear. Um, and so we're out there. <laughs> Caitlin is warm in the car, by the way. Um, we are out there in the blizzard trying to dig my car out. He tells me to get in and to try it. I do. We, I st we still can't get any traction. Um, get back out, continue digging out. He's like, get back in the car, put it in neutral. I'll try to push it. We try that. It doesn't work. Um, by this point, Peanut realizes what is happening. So like I go back in the house, um, cause my hands are freezing, like frozen. Um, and because I have no gloves on and it's like wind is whipping and it's snowing and I'm shoveling. And so Eric's like, you need to go back in the house. So like I go back in the house and search for gloves. Peanut's like, what is going on? And I was like, Eric's stuck in the driveway. So to his credit, my nine year old child immediately gets dressed for the weather and goes outside to see if he can help dig out of the snow, which was very sweet and thoughtful of him. I go back out there we're trying to make the best of it. And Eric is like, listen, at this point, there is 0% chance we are making this appointment. So just take Caitlin and go back inside. So that is what I do. So I get her out of the car. I take her back in the house. Um, Peanut is still out there for a very short period of time. Eric eventually tells him also to come back in. I tell Eric, I'm like, you probably need to come in. Like, it's negative 30 with the wind chill. It's miserable out here. And he was like, no, I'm going to see if I can try to get the car out. And if I can't, like, I'm going to come up with another plan. So he cannot get the car out. <laughs> he, it's stuck. Um, so he basically is able to, now remember he has a city car thankfully. So he's able to pull the city car in between the truck and my car where it's stuck in the driveway uh, back to the cart. So here I did, I did trim this down about a quarter of an inch um, just because in my, <laughs> in my pursuits to make sure my frames were straight, I didn't make sure that I had an, the appropriate amount of space between the top and the bottom. And so it was uneven. So at this point, everything is assembled except for the um, parts that need to be adhered to the card base. So I am going to glue this down with a slight gap at the top and the bottom of my card base, and then I will fill these pieces in to the card. Um, so anywho, so he's able to pull it up. He uses the Impala to jump the truck because the battery is dead. <laughs> so he uses the Impala to jump the truck and then uses the truck to pull my car out of the driveway, which I have to tell you was very impressive. I was like, I can't believe that you did that. He's like, I'm not calling a tow truck to like get our own vehicle out of our own driveway. And so then he was understandably like he was aggravated with himself because he was like, I shouldn't have tried to, you know, push through the snow drift. I should have, you know, shoveled it or whatever beforehand, but we were trying to get her to her doctors. And I was like, dude, you don't have to explain anything to me. Like I totally get it. I got, I have got my own vehicle stuck many a time thinking that I could drive through snow and my luxury compact cannot do it. Um, and so no judgment here. Like I was very impressed. He was able to get that done. So while he was out in the garage doing that, I called the doctor's office and was like, yo, we are not going to make it. We're stuck in our own driveway. And so long story short, they told me that it is extraordinarily rare for children of her age to get strep throat, even if other people in the household have it. So chances of her having it are pretty slim. Um, but they, you know, they're like, there's, you know, things you can watch for. So they kind of gave me the rundown of that. Genuinely, I think she just had some other type of regular cold because she had a little bit of, she never spiked a fever and I had a fever with the strep throat. Um, I also had like the sweats and the chills, uh, which were awful. And so did Eric and she never had those either. So I don't think that she had strep. I think that she just had some other regular, you know, type of cold. 
Um, but yeah, it was a day. It was a day. So here for the sentiments, I heat embossed them on charcoal cardstock. And then um, because I used the foam tape on the frames, I also used foam tape on my sentiments. I just put them on the left and right hand sides and then put glue in the middle where they would sit flush on the frames. Um, and that is how I adhered them. Uh, if you guys remember a couple of weeks back, I was telling you about my nephew and how he had recently passed his um, DAT and, or DAT, is it DAT, DAT? I'm not sure. But anyway, he passed it, his, his um, dental board. And so this card, um, I made his birthday card the last time. Um, and I believe that I am going, I thought I had made him a congratulations card, but then I couldn't find anything in my stock. Um, so I'm going to send him this one and he loves all things like skiing and snowboarding. So this is going to be right up his alley. Another little detail I just added is I went in with a white gel pen and added kind of some snow onto my trees. And then I went in with like some clear glitter um, pen and put that down. And then on the peaks of the mountains, as well as like the edges of the snow mounds, I added some stardust stickles for just some sparkle. Um, just, you know, those are just like fun little details you can add because this is a pretty uh, monochromatic card, like... There's not, you know, I mean, there's not a lot going on. Um, well, there is a lot going on, but there's not a lot of colors, I guess I should say. So anyway, that's it. Uh, if you would like more details or still photos, this um, this card is actually being shared over on the Hero Arts blog today. I would encourage you to go over and check that out. Thank you guys so much for joining me, and I will catch you on the next video. Bye.